first of all i must uh, thank dr mohan reddy who has been actively engaged in institution building he is one of those very important people who represented the industry in building ict academy over the last several years i must also acknowledge the role that industry associations have played in formulating ict academy primarily cie cii under whose initiative this institution was formed about 10 years back and funding from the ministry of information technology and subsequently by aict and the various colleges that has brought it to this level the primary motivation or the primary intent of ict academy is to take higher education to institutions in tier 2 and tier 3 cities so that students and faculty from those institutions will be able to compete with those that are in urban areas and well known institutions that was the objective the reason why that was set as an objective was there was a tremendous demand for ict capability information technology professionals and communication technology professionals as we witnessed an it and a communication boom about 12 to 15 years back so in order to encourage greater participation of students from remote areas this academy was set up and that continues to remain the primary purpose and the way this institution has been doing it is by developing faculty in all the way on all the colleges that are not located in urban areas and also those that are in located in urban areas but are uh, they have the disadvantage of not being able to attract the best of faculty given that we have made tremendous strides in terms of impact, impacting a large number of people but we do have challenges and these are good challenges technology in the last 10 years has grown tremendously the type of opportunities that we have for young people today is phenomenal words that we haven't heard in the past have become common lexicon in the it industry data science was something that wasn't even heard about 4 or 5 years back cloud computing has taken the entire world by surprise and institutions like microsoft and amazon which provide cloud services demand larger and larger number of people to service greater and greater number of customers companies like google which have located a significant part of their research and development activity and development activity here in india have an insatiable need for qualified technical person so we are at such a great time that unless institutions like ict academy scale up and produce good qualified educated students we will miss a huge opportunity that lies ahead of us as a country and more specifically as an industry there are two challenges first and foremost is to remain ahead of the current technologies while we were talking about cloud computing mobile computing and uh, iot devices etc those are things that have taken firm root while they are growing it's no longer of interest to educational institutions of higher learning and research people seem to be focusing on quantum computing computing complexities self correcting systems platforms that can be developed that are ubiquitously applied across generations of computers and another terminology that i learned from dr mohan reddy about excess computing these are technologies of the future and one thing that we have learned in this technology space is future is far closer than we imagined them to be we think of something as a technology that is 4 or 5 years out but before we realize it's upon us and we are demanding resources one such example is one of the companies that ict academy is going to sign a partnership with it's called automation anywhere automation anywhere is a leading product vendor 
in the robotic process automation area. RPA are robotics that are used in business processes. Tremendous growth, tremendous scale and the demand for those resources or those talent is enormous. This is exactly the same position that we were in, ICT Academy was in about two years back when Salesforce talent was in great demand globally. We signed up a partnership with Salesforce and set up programs across various educational institutions, opening the minds of faculty to these type of new technologies and products and thereby creating students who are competent to work in this particular area. So this is the progression that we are trying to make both in terms of applications of new technologies and experimenting with new technologies with higher end research institutions. What are the challenges that we have as we go forward? One of the things that would help the academy is liberating education. Liberating education in the true sense of the word where academic institutions are empowered to offer courses, offer training with the curriculum, outside of the curriculum, encourage faculty to participate in industry events, encourage them to participate in research activities globally, etc., etc. Provide online programs, at this point in time, many of the institutions, apart from the leading ones, which I mean, everybody talks about institutions like the IITs or ISERS, Institute of Scientific and Engineering Research or Indian Statistical Institute or Mathematical Institutions, they have good continuing education programs and research programs. They are able to find the necessary funds to fund these type of research and grow. But not all institutions are in that advantageous position idea is how do we take it to those institutions how can we liberate how can we have the same model that we apply to these leading institutions like iit become applicable to other institutions and allow the market allow the faculty allow the students to determine which are the good competent institutions that should remain and develop students and which are the ones which will naturally fade away because of whatever reasons that they don't deserve to exist that is the first type of liberation that is required. And the second and the more important area where ICT Academy has chosen to contribute is bringing industry and academia together. You know, when we started in about 2009 in Tamil Nadu, there were close to about 80% of the computer science teachers, professors and lecturers who had not even visited an IT company. They were teaching, providing them the education. Sure enough, you know, the, the puritanical nature of education has to be maintained. It's not the intent of ICT Academy to turn any of the colleges or universities into training institutions. Pure education is something that we want them to focus on, but add to them a little bit of skill development and training programs that the Academy imparts. So one of the first steps that we took was to encourage faculty members to visit industry spend some time with the leading IT companies so that they could learn what is going on in these institutions and go back to their respective colleges and tell the students with great deal of confidence, I know what is happening in the IT industry. I know what the expectations are. I can prepare you for that and I can get you a job in that institution provided this is the type of learning that you have. That was a significant first step that we took and that's where the industry and the academia collaboration started and that is something that is continuing to grow and in order to protect the research nature of many of these institutions we encouraged researchers to publicize or conduct research that can be published by journals brought out by the ICT Academy. This is something that's going on the last several years over 100 technical articles and papers have been published in ICT Academy. This is globally vetted, peer-reviewed publications and the, uh, some of the leading institutions are very, very happy to participate in academic research and publishing papers and working jointly together. And in certain areas where we have been able to bring entrepreneurship together, ICT Academy, academic institutions and research parks have started collaborating. The collaboration happens through a multi-dimensional 
collaboration between technology vendors, software vendors, industry participants who apply these technologies and so on. So my final comment that I want to add, apart from requesting that we all work towards liberating education, particularly higher education, making it accessible to all the people in the remotest part of the country, making it affordable so that they can participate in this technology revolution that is gathering momentum and that's impacting every single industry, to also encourage all the faculty members to devote a little bit of their time in equipping themselves through programs not only from ICT Academy, you know, I understand there are at least on an average about four or five programs, power programs that are launched by ICT Academy in every city, not just by participating in them, but by contributing ideas and bringing together specialists that you have in your own respective areas. There is no reason why a center of excellence established in a remote college in Noida cannot take that expertise all India through ICT Academy. We would like to offer ICT Academy as a platform for those specializations to be brought to bear to students and faculty in the rest of the country. With this, let me thank all the leaders, the education leaders here and the educationists who are here and an important thank you to the, all the teachers and professors who are here who have contributed to developing students who are building the ICT industry. Thank you very much and enjoy the day's session.